I'm on uh, the president of a board of a halfway house, the oldest operating, continually operating uh, halfway house in the United States called the Lyman House in Wilmington, Delaware. And we save lives. And it's really what we do. We, we break the cycle of addiction. We take people that were in jail and turn them into taxpayers. And people who re re reunite their families. That's mission. You know, and I think we lose that when we get into projects. We lose this idea of, you know, when, when, when we get to this idea of, well, why do we exist? We're in an organization that's doing projects, but we really understand why we exist and what's important to us. One of our clients is CBS Caremark, and they had their internal corporate screen playing when I was up there last month, and it said that they weren't going to run the issue of Rolling Stone in their stores. Anybody know why? Go ahead. Um, the Boston Bomber was on the front cover. The Boston Bomber was on the front cover. What was wrong with those pictures? What did they specifically not like about those pictures? That they felt like it was promoting terror. The way they were promoted, and, 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 and they were permitted, and they were prohibited from producing those pictures, and they demonstrated some corporate value, right? What's important to us? What's our ethical approach to how we do business? And at some point, we say, what do we want to be in the future? And that becomes a vision. And when we look at those those visions, the strategies we see have very common themes. You know, there's this whole theme I've, I've come up with over the past couple of years, and I, I had this in our very first uh, project management training guide in 1997, and I call it the Al Haig thing, uh, when, you, when the Reagan administration started in 1981. Well, what was his title? Secretary of State. Anybody know what it was before that? General General of what? It was a general, yeah. Say again? He was a general of the NATO command, okay? And NATO was kind of left over to, to hold the Soviets in check, right? So, so Reagan comes into office and he says, okay, I need somebody who's gonna talk instead of go to war. Let me put a general in that spot, right? <laughs> Loaded 45, safety off in his back pocket. He's, he's the guy who's gonna negotiate with you, okay? Just don't, just don't get him upset and everything will go fine. So that's kind of how, what we had here, right? And, and, and that, that day, when John Hinckley attempted assassination, uh, Al, Al had a defining moment. I want to talk about defining moments in this presentation. There are defining moments in every project. Predictable defining moments when we're going to have to do something. Okay? Or somebody else is going to do something. Should the president decide he wants to tr transfer the helm to the vice president, he, he will do so. As of now, I am in control here. <laughs> and the vice president and in, in close touch with There he is. So leadership was taken and not given, right? Clearly, leadership was not given to him. Now, behind the scenes, something must have gone on, right? So we know the football's been separated. We know the vice president's not very visible. Visible. He said we have who was the first guy? Dick Allen and David Gurton. Right? We had the, the, the deputy in charge of, of, of the press secretary. You got two people in the situation room saying, "What are we going to do?" And Al saying, "There's no alert measures," and his voice is almost shaking, right? So. I like to bring this up because I call this this thing project management the Al Haig thing. Right? There's the, there's these defining moments where we have an opportunity to take leadership, and if we don't, who does? Does it happen that somebody else takes leadership if we don't? Yeah. Is it possible that project managers don't take leadership? It happens all the time. And what I want to talk about just for a moment is just this idea of what do we mean by the right projects? Right? And it's these things, right? If, if, if I'm at the senior levels of an organization, I'm trying to decide, or we're trying to decide as an executive team, what are the right projects, it has to have some of these aspects, doesn't it? We want to have as little risk as we can, and high ROI, and have it be cost effective, and align to our vision, and the ideal timing, it can't take forever, and hopefully somebody wants it. Right? So when we go through this process, when I get the project, I'm the project manager, some of this stuff is already decided, isn't it? So these people always get it right when they set that budget and that schedule before you get it, right, project managers? <laughs> you don't feel like they should have ever consulted you because they're cool, they got it, right? And not only that, but this idea, you know, about change, um, you know, it's like we're going to change the company, but you're not going to change the budget. We're going to change the company, but you're not going to change the schedule. Right, so so we're, we're faced with this prospect of when we get to execution, to do the on time, on budget, on spec thing, things are sometimes already misaligned. So one of our first defining moments, predictable point of resistance, is to say, what are you going to do about it? 
what, what kind of what kind of reaction do you get when you say, uh, <coughs> excuse me, this is a scope change, and uh, we got to look at the impact on the schedule of the budget? Yeah. Yeah. Plan for it. What, what kind? What, how would you, you know, just give me an emotion? It's it's not my problem. Not my problem. What's what's the emotion? Anger. Anger. Dissatisfaction. And what we what we're worried about as project managers is what? If I say no, what am I worried about? What am I risking by saying no? Say again? Displeasing. Displeasing, unsatisfaction. We want to keep everybody happy, so we take it. Okay? But if I push it and I put my foot down and I force the issue, how does the second one go? A lot easier. Right? So we have the, the, those defining moments. Is that a defining moment in the project, how we're going to handle those first couple change orders? Yeah. And what I see is a lot of people respect when I do it well, because ultimately it goes better in the future. But this idea that it's really about execution, why do I talk about that? Because a lot of project management time is spent on planning and initiating, and when we get to execution, the question is, are we really going to follow the plan? Are we going to follow that scope document? How are we going to do that? So that's a defining moment, right? What do we mean by control? When I was at IBM in professional services, I was taught an objective definition of control, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. But I got to show this defining moment because this is execution. <laughs> Same year, 2009, number one selling first release album in the history of the United Kingdom. And I heard there were some other musicians from that country. <laughs> <laughs> Today's net worth, 25 million pounds, which is a lot more in dollars. Okay, that's execution. She said, this is my moment, I never got the chance, I'm gonna show you. And uh, I forget, Ellen Page, lately? Yeah, so if you, if you go on YouTube, watch her getting that moment where that she dreamed about on stage with her and just hanging right with her. She's got the same talent as her idol. So it worked out. So just a couple of wrap-up thoughts here. Being in control is not subject to opinion. So what I was told is you either are or not in control. And control is you're doing the execution things. Okay? Are we doing the execution things is the question. Uh, so really what we're at is to close out here. Uh, all endeavors calls for the ability to tramp the last mile, shape the last plan, endure the last hour's toil. The fight to the finish spirit is the one. You know, what this really means is, you know, we, project managers really have to understand what finish means, right? It's not spelled with, spelled with two N's, unless you're from Finland. Right? We really have to know how to finish. And I said something earlier, it's a series of first downs. It's closing all the time. Right? It's making sure people know what done means from the very beginning. And that's really when there's several defining moments in a project where we can say, this is what the definition of done is, and do incremental closes. You know, controlling tempo controls the game. Yep. Right? And I learned this in a real project. We were doing a project for the, for the Delaware Memorial Bridge when I was at IBM. It was a disaster, and I was the second project manager, not the first. So I was brought into a flaming wreck, and this is what it looked like. These were the things that were being done well, and these were all the things I owed to the customer. And the reason I put that picture up there is, is our, uh, our, our regional executive came in every week to review our project, and he said, Gus, are there any balls on our side of the net? And, and I said, what do you mean? And he would give me all of these examples, one sign change orders, and status reports that haven't been reviewed, and acceptance of deliverables, and blah, 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 issues that are open that haven't gotten decisions. And they were all over the place. And I couldn't get this customer under control. And he started showing me how to hit those balls back over the net. And it got to a point where all the balls were going over. What was happening was when I started controlling the tempo of the game, the project started getting, getting better faster. And I learned that. And my question is always, how do we step up? And what are those tools that we have that sets the tempo of the game?